corners of thy field. When thou reapest neither, shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. <clears throat> we gotta leave something for the poor. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. God has always, through our scripture, taken care of the poor. Always. Always. Always taking care of the poor. I learned that from my grandmother growing up. Anybody come knocking on that door was hungry, she fed them. It was something that was, you always, you don't, you don't rebuff the poor. Now, I know today we got so many scammers out there. You got dudes on corners and people on corners begging for money. And they might not necessarily be poor. That's just what they're doing. But this is what I've learned even with them. Take, take all them Walmart bags. I'm collecting Walmart bags right now. Take all them bags you got from this, all the shopping we do and stick some fruit, stick some water, stick a gospel track in there, a piece of paper, lead people to Jesus, and pe keep them in the car. So when you see them, instead of giving them money, have them some food, especially here in Florida water. That's what I do. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You should do no severe work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Now, we finally get into where we're headed. This is where we are right now. The 24th, I believe, 24th to the 25th, is when we'll be observing the day of atonement by 24 or 25 hours of, of, of fasting. And that's when we examine ourselves. Verse 27 in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. Also on the 10th day of the 7th month. That was a different calendar, so it's different than what we got right now. There shall be a day of atonement. It shall be in holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls by fasting and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever so it be... Let me stop right there quick because I hear the Holy Spirit speaking. I don't know if they still have it or not, but I remember, I believe, in the, in the month of May, they had created a National Day of Prayer. First of all, we already have a National Day of Prayer. It's called the Day of Atonement. Not only is it a national day of prayer, it's a national day of prayer and fasting. See, when we do stuff the Bible way, we will get the Bible results. Somebody made up on a, hey, let's, let, let's create a national day of prayer and make, no, let's do what the Bible says. How about that? The day of atonement is literally a national day of prayer for the believers. And that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. God will tell us what to do and then man comes along and says, oh, let's, let's make up our own thing and do it our own way. We already have a national day of prayer and fasting. It's called the Day of Atonement. And you should do no severe, no dual work in that self someday. It is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord God. Verse 29. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So it seems very severe that if you did not observe these things, you was cut off. But what God was doing was helping them understand how important it was for them to acknowledge him in all their ways. He was teaching them, you served Pharaoh, you served sin, you served uncleanliness and unrighteousness. Now I need to teach you how to be born again, how to be righteous. We have to be taught, family. Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So we have to have knowledge on how we need to serve this holy God. You have to be taught. You cannot do things the way you used to do them and call yourself a born-again believer. You cannot do it. It does not work. For whatsoever so it shall be, we almost done, for whatsoever so it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Cut off. You was cut off. And whatsoever so it be that doeth any work in that same day, that same soul will I destroy from among the people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Never change. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of, unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls by fasting. In the ninth day of the month at even, from evening unto evening, shall you celebrate your Sabbath. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, 
on the fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. A feast of tabernacles, which is the after the day of atonement. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no severe work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. You hear people today using that word solemn assembly, and it's not, not the same. And you shall do no severe work therein. 37 in chapter 23 of Leviticus. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice, drink offerings, everything upon this day, besides the Sabbath of the Lord, besides your gifts, besides all your vows, besides all your free will offerings, which you give unto the Lord. Verse 39. Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord. Seven days of the first day shall be a Sabbath, and the eighth shall be a Sabbath. And you shall take you on the first day of the boughs of goodly trees, branches, palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute for every your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. It's a celebration, family. We almost done. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. He declared to the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Let me help you understand. This book is not a book of suggestions. If you ever want the things that God has for you, at some point in your life, in your walk, in your journey, you're going to have to do what God told you to do. I want to uh, reinforce that for three more scriptures out of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 16, 13, it says, Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. So Deuteronomy 16, 13, Deuteronomy 16, 16 says, Three times in a year shall all your males appear before the Lord thy God and the place which he shall choose in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he has is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Let me say this. Anybody and everybody that's lacking or short, we haven't done what God has called, called and told us to do. How can you expect to get what God said if you won't do what he told you to do? Th that's common sense. Think all the years that people have not done this. I remember talking to a pastor one time. Not only did he work a full-time job on top of preaching the gospel, his wife worked third shift. And I was like, ain't no way in the world that's God's will for this man, for him to be taking care of his people as a shepherd, under shepherd, and then he had to go to a full-time job, and then his wife worked third shift. I was like, wow, that's just way too much. How are the people supposed to get free if the leaders are not free? One more scripture, Deuteronomy 31, 10. And Moses commanded them, saying, at the end of every seven years, in the, in the solemnity of the year of the release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land 
whether you go over Jordan to possess it. There was a time where I had no idea, family. I, I was clueless to all these type of things. Didn't know nothing about it. But I will say this, in that time, although I was going to church paying tithes and being faithful, I was empty. I was still lacking. I'm not saying I got everything the way I would desire it right now in this very moment. But when I went from who I was to accepting what the word completely says about the feast, my life radically changed. Number one, I was in full-time ministry. I didn't, I didn't have the faith to understand and believe how God could take care of me without me taking care of myself. That's saying a whole lot. Because everybody understands that when you go to a job, <laughs> excuse me, and you work X amount of hours, by law, by the, the human law, they have to pay you X amount of wages. God's law is totally different. When we obey him, and do what he's called and created us to do and observe the things he's told us to observe and give where he told us to give, he has to keep his word. God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he would have need to repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. So often people don't have the opportunity to prove God. In Malachi, God said, prove me. So often people don't have an opportunity to prove God. If you've never been in a position to prove God at his word, to see if he can really take care of you without you taking care of yourself, you have no idea what faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You should be able to testify if you've ever been in a position like, Lord, people, I have no income, but I have a place to live. I have food to eat. I have clothes on my back. I have gas in my car. I have a car. I have insurance on my car. When you have an opportunity to live like this and you can tell people that you're able to live like this because God is your provision, not the government, not SSI, not child support, but God is truly making it happen for you, you are living by faith. And God has given me the opportunity since I was 30 years old to live this way. Where he, he provides, we, we, had, we had a bill due yesterday. On the storage facility. I ain't got no I, I, I ain't no shame in my game. This is the blessings of God. We had a bill due on our storage facility. We've just moved here and we have stuff in storage. And um, the night before, somebody sent, you know, 98% of the money. Not, and I just happened to have the other little bit of money in my wallet to go with it to pay the storage thing off. And that's, that's the way God, you know, somewhere, look, at I'm sitting, me and my wife is, is where we're at. And somewhere God is moving the heart of a person to give their hard-earned money. <laughs> that, that, all, I can, all I can say is when you do to the best of your ability the things that God has called and created you to do, God is always going to do his, he's already done his part. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, no matter where you are, that you take his word for his word. His word is his word. And it's to, for me, I wasn't observing the things that God had told me to observe. Jesus commanded his disciples what to observe. Everything he commanded, he says, observe, observe what I've commanded you. Like I just said, yesterday people observed something that God did not command us. And they're going to do it on the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And unfortunately, with doing those things, you're rejecting the things that God has told us to do. You can't serve two masters. That's common sense. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you in the name of Jesus Christ for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. I pray, Father God, that you give anybody and everybody who have a desire to walk further into your marvelous light, to come into your light with the understanding of what you have shared through the feast of the Lord. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we get it right before it's too late. I'm talking about the body of Jesus Christ, not just me and my house. Because we don't serve pagan secular holidays. If it's not written, it's not written. But Father, I just pray, Father God, you will just continue to allow us to celebrate you in all these feasts and help people understand what your word says concerning about who you was. Your word is your word. And it would not return unto you void, but it has a purpose and a reason and, and, and an assignment to, to accomplish those things which you have said and sent it out to do, Father God. It will not return unto you void. It serves a purpose. The Bible says that one plants, another waters, Father God, and you give the increase. Increase is coming for so many people. 
and so many others will be, be found lacking because they have not allowed you to use them to reveal your glory, which is our purpose for being here. I thank you for the platforms you give me to share this word on. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, that somebody's blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. May God bless you and heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.